Welcome to Train Plays Dragon Alliance. This game is available for free on Steam if you get it before September 23rd, 2021. So I thought I'd showcase the game since I have fallen behind on my video production with the recent games I've been working on. I'm not playing, I'm not going to play this uh, round for serious, so I'm just going to hire some of the top dogs. Now, be aware that uh, these mercenaries won't all just join you. Sometimes they'll be on a, someone else's assignment, sometimes they require you to have existed for a certain number of days, and sometimes they require your performance to be pretty good. So, for example, uh, I saw a comment when I was looking up the game, someone was upset that, somebody did, uh, that the player did not hire magic in the first day. You can't. If I scroll over to the guy named Magic, or, or maybe it was Mike. Weren't you shown a copy of my biography? Basically, they're saying, no, you cannot hire me. Now, on easy mode, you get $2,500 or 25000 to start with. On hard mode, you get 5000 It was hard mode that I did my recording on, but... Glad you asked, but I'll have to see how things go down there before I join. Check with me in a bit. That's fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna zip through it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hire since we can't hire Mike or Magic, the the top the the most expensive people in the game. We are going to hire the common heroes that pretty much everybody goes through. On an actual playthrough, I probably would not hire Fidel. I mean, when I was younger, yes, I totally would hire him because he's got a, such an incredible explosives skill. But I don't like that he won't disengage from battle. Now you can get around that by unequipping him. That's that is kind of cheesing it. So we will hire Ivan. So here's Fido. He's a great character, and I would recommend you get him. I mean, if he's firing at someone, you probably want that someone to die, anyways. But we will go and hire him for this playthrough. Yes, I work for you. Show, dude. I'm itching, I'm due, I'm ready. Ice is a fantastic character. He pretty much will fit in almost any party you're trying to design. I'll be there in the morning, and then we'll see what that madman is made of. Sure, I'll go. If there's anything you need or anything I can do for you, you just let me know. Hell yeah, I'll join. All right, and so this is a solid squad of six. We can hire two more, but we're not going to worry about that. Apparently on easy mode, you also only have to pay $600 for your, for your helicopter. In hard mode, you have to play it, pay a thousand. We suffered a serious setback. Sometime this morning, someone managed to get into the processing plant and steal an essential piece of equipment. Without the micro purifier, we're shut down. We have to get it back as soon as possible. Until then, there's no point in tapping any trees. Don't listen to him. Um, so let's... There's a lot to, to digest here. And the purpose of this is to demonstrate for you and hopefully entice you into playing the game. We start down here. Enemy starts over here. But they really own the whole map, but this is like the enemy HQ over here. The map sector, if you see, look in the bottom right, this is sector 1. The one to the right of that is 2, 3, and so forth. So right now I'm on sector 4. If I go down a row, I will be at sector 14. So, this is Sector 60. If I go up one, that'll be Sector 50. The reason I'm mentioning these is, if you play on easy or normal mode, you'll find the Micro Purifier on the first tile you explore. If, if you're playing on hard mode, it'll be within any of these three. And I'm not going to go through that again, so we're just going to play in easy mode and grab it on the first, first go. Alright, so let's take a look at the first panel, Team. This... This button can be switched off, on and off because it's deciding on who you're allocating on the map. We're going to go and allocate the team here. But let's actually take a look at them. Now, you can select what they're going to do. So, for example, if I wanted to train them, I could maybe say, like, hey, you're going to learn explosives. We're not going to worry about that because we're not playing for the long haul. I'm just going to show you one one adventure. All right. We don't really need the, map, the knife. We do want the bullets. 
So if I hold shift click and click on this, I will grab a full stack and no more can fit. No room. All right, I've gone through and equipped my characters. Nothing to worry about. We will go ahead and apply this hmm. just to liven things up. Hmm. So this is reducing the durability of my camouflage kit. Hmm. Hmm. Empty. And now we're out of it. So we have a total of, wow, okay, there's another difference. On hard mode, I only had 10 uh, available Metavirians. This, this island is called Metaviria, and the natives are called Metavirians. So what I had to do was I had to deduct my number of guards up to down to seven so that I could employ tappers. I don't want to interfere with your plans, but I should remind you that I can't pay you for sap that's tapped but not processed. Now, it takes three tappers to tap any given tree, so that's what the yellow squares on the, on the right mean. The blue squares are the number of guards. So, you can have up to eight guards on any map. I believe there can be up to eight enemies on any on, on any tile. And you can have up to eight of your team hire it at any given time, even if some of them are staying back at base. Now, the reason why he's complaining is I don't have the micro purifier, so he's thinking that I'm paying these guys for nothing. Realistically, because I would imagine if you have enough skill to win the game, you will find the micro purifier on the first day. Um, we've maxed out on tappers. We've maxed out on guards. I can't hire any more tappers because these trees are not listed as safe until I clear the areas next to me. So that's what the black trees indicate. Over here indicates I'm working two out of four available trees. And this would indicate how many I'm processing. I, I, I can't process any right now. If I hold the, if I ho click and hold the trees button, that tells me where all the factories are. So we could process 20 if I had the micro purifier. And if I conquer the areas here and here or here, I can process that many more extra trees. We're going to go ahead and move on out and get to work. All right. To begin with, let's real quick describe how to play the game. Uh, over down here is your primary hand and over here is your tool hand. You, I can't actually throw a grenade from this hand. And then the rest of these are my vest. Uh, F1, F2, F3, F4, and so forth will select my characters. It goes all the way to F7 and F8, and then F9 would show, tell you how many enemies you see. Hitting T activates the travel button right here. Hitting D activates the done button, which ends your turn in a combat phase. So I'm not actually near the corner of the map, edge of the map, so I can't traverse. We'll talk more about that as time goes on. Inventory. Press I. Map. You can press M. Now, if you want, for example, a mini map, I would say press page down from this section here. Um, and this cycle. So if I press page down again, I will enter full screen mode. And just so you know, if I press tab from here, this, uh, this enters regular view mode. If I press tab again, it goes back to whatever you were last on between wide and full. So this is full. This is wide. So if I press tab from here, it'll go back to, to normal. And then if I press tab again, it'll go back to wide. So that's all it does. Now if I press tab from this screen, it shows me what I've explored, and that's nothing, apparently. Now if you left and right click, left click first, otherwise you'll probably fire a gun. That signals your entire army to move at the same time. Now there, you can't really see every door in the game. So for example, there's a door here. It's cool. And there's a door over here. He's saying he's found stuff. So if I wanted, for example, I could pick up this gun and let's go and do that. So we have two guys with guns that I don't have bullets for. What? Okay. A 38. So that blue guy wandering around my guard. If he was yellow. Let's go ahead and move on. I don't know if you can actually read these. Okay. Nothing. We'll actually go to the left this time, just to change things up. For me, I went to the north. Uh, because that was the most tactically sound decision. Alright, so I mentioned I would travel. Instead of hitting T or clicking this button, you can actually hold left click and then drag to the left, or whichever direction you wanted to travel in. You'll see now that the, the, there's a number between our profile. This is Sector 59, and it's flashing red and green to indicate that there are enemies here. Uh, one thing I would recommend you do is go and right-click your characters and select Max Aim. If you're playing seriously, I would probably select Reserve Points, but I am not playing seriously, so we're going to leave that off. I will go ahead and... Nah, that's fine. We'll leave them. Uh, we'll go ahead and have everybody set the Max Aim just by default, and I'll explain what that is in a second. 
We'll have Bud not be back saying. Just so I can show the difference. So if I wanted to sneak, I would hold shift. So right now, if I move to this square, that would take me 13 action points. If I hold shift, that'll take me 21 instead. Let's go and just sneak. That indicates that he kind of gave himself away. Check. Let's keep sneaking. It's very slow. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're playing seriously. And uh, so Hi, let's yeah. just go and keep moving now. Yo. What's up? Always try to be behind cover. Huh? Then in your turn. All right. So we haven't seen the enemy yet. What's up? Check. What? I hear you. If you don't spend all your AP, your characters can pass up to five yeah. AP to the next turn. So, for example, let's go ahead and just have him walk here. In turn, he spent he shared to his future self. I hear you. What? Check. What's up? Okay, so the enemy saw me and got an interruption on me. Now it's back to my turn. I click on this, I will see what time it is. It's 8.15. When the red bar fills up the entire thing, it is... Uh, the day is over. These yellow trees are the trees that you're fighting over for the island. You get enough yellow trees, you can pay all your mercenaries. Now let's go ahead and continue to advance. And we're going to go ahead and right-click myself and then left-click. That will result in ducking. Check. What we can do is we can see if Bud has noticed this enemy. Now, he didn't notice before he fired, and he still doesn't see him. So while I can try to take a shot, it probably would not be successful. Still, let's go ahead and demonstrate what we actually mean by fast aim and, or max aim and not aim. So right now, if I had hit right-click, this tells me that it takes 8 AP to raise my gun and fire in that direction. By left-clicking the enemy, I am now locked on target, and if I right-click any further, so from here, it increases, every every right-click increases my AP expenditure, meaning that I will spend more time aiming. Once you've hit it about four times or it turns red, that's as much as you can aim. So if I wanted to take a full aim shot, I would spend 12 AP on it. We're going to actually hit escape, and we're going to try to get a little closer. It might not be very good, but again, we're not taking this seriously. Check. What? I see guy here. Yo. I hear ya. What's up? So Bud is going to take a real quick pot shot at him for 8 AP, hitting him. Now, because Bud is he's frozen in time right now, his gun is still out. So firing again would actually take less AP. It would only take 6 AP at this point. Since he only has 9, I'm not going to take a quick snapshot. I'm going to actually spend the rest of his AP just to aim at him and fire, which ultimately killed off my opponent. All right. What? Now, we did see another bad guy, and he kind of wandered to the south before he lost track of him. Dog. Yo. Can Ice, can Ice see him? He cannot, so we'll go ahead and just duck and wait. I hear ya. Wolf cannot see him either, so we'll have him duck and wait as well. Doesn't I mean that the enemy ya. can't see me, but this is less likely. We're going to have Wolf take a, take a shot just to scare this guy off. Now, because he was set to max aim, his f original shot, his first moment of attack will be at the highest AP. This doesn't mean that he gets a freebie or anything like that. All that means is instead of starting at 8 AP to shoot and then working my way up, he's starting at 12 and I'll work my way through. That's all that means. So I took a shot, hit him, and maybe he's going to freak out and not continue to advance. So that was that was the end of his move, in fact. Take another shot. If I walk forward, 
I will lower my arms, and as such, I will require more AP to fire again. Since he has... Now, it took me 10 AP to shoot a max shot. The game is smart enough to realize that, hey, then my next max shot should be 9. Check. Bud is the only one who's not selected to be max shot, so we'll just have him take a pot shot. And that was successful. Operation successful. Sector secure. There's the micro purifier, and that's it. So I'm, I'm just wand I'm just hovering the cursor around the foliage and see if, if anything else dropped. Ten four. The micro purifier. Finding the purifier should score me a couple of points. All right. So if I turn on, let's see, item info, and then go to inventory, and I right-click this. The micro purifier. This will give me information that I can read about it. By also checking out other things, it will tell me the condition and how many bullets. A 38 revolver in perfect condition with three bullets. If I wanted to, I can check. 10-4. S36-D9. Stored AM. Distribute items as needed. LS. So LS is probably Lucas Santiago or Santo or whatever. S36 is probably... Um, Sector 36, I would assume D9 is Day 9. I don't remember, but I'm assuming that's what all those mean. So I can also Ten check four. what's in these crates, if anything. Hmm. Can't tell what that is, but let's press Z on it. I believe that's an explosives detector. Hmm. A vest. Ten four. Hmm. Ten four. Bulletproof vest. Hmm. And a lockpick. I hear you. Done. So if I were playing seriously, I would pick up all these things. Uh, so that I can bring it back to base, but we are not, so we're just going to head in in the day. I can end the day by pressing C to compress time. I can also hit M to consolidate my resources. So for example, if I wanted to remove guards from here, so this is that's not a zero, that's a one. Uh, that doesn't look very good, but that's a one. Then this is a two and so forth. I can send two guards over here if I wished to. Um, I can't seem to un undo that, so <laughs> we're just going to hit OK. That's some way I can cons consolidate, especially if I were to take over more than one area at a time. But I'm just showcasing the game. So those two guards that I sent, they have arrived here, in fact. To take a look. I can now send them back if I felt like it. Let's go ahead. So they will arrive back in Sector 60, and we'll just continue to compress time and, and wait, for the wait for the day to end. So that's Dragon Alliance. There's no, there's no harm in adding it to your library. Maybe even download and play the game. You got the micro purifier and instill some fear in the process. It's early, but with the plant back processing 20 trees tomorrow, we're off to a great start. The urgency with which you retrieve the micro purifier warrants a bonus. I hope you'll accept a thousand dollars as a token of my appreciation. Now, there was an intro to the game, but since we're, since we're just showcasing how the game works rather than making a full playthrough, it wasn't part of this episode. Here is a chart that I whipped up by going to the wiki of um, Jagged Alliance, putting all the information down in, in, in one page, and then sorting some things out. So all the characters you see here are the ones that can be hired on the first day. There's other stats, but these are pretty much the ones you have to worry about at the beginning. So the ones I would probably use in a, play, in a real playthrough would probably be Ivan, Ice, Snake, Bud, Wolf, and Sparky. Sparky is not a very good fighter, but you don't need her to be. She can just be the person who tends to things at home. Certain things, uh, certain abilities are, are I colored red to indicate that, hey, that's not a very good thing. So for example, Carp is crap. He does not improve. <laughs> uh, Larry, he actually loses skills. And also, when he's in battle, he sometimes forgets what he's doing and just wastes your AP. Certain characters don't swim, so you'd want to watch out for that. And some, certain characters are just really, really bad at shooting. That's an actual trait, and not just a matter of their marksmanship ability. These are all the hireable ones for the first, uh, for, for the first day, and then after, the, after, after you've accomplished one day, you could hire Bernie and Doc. That's, that's why I filtered them out, so I could try to figure out who I would want to make as part of my army. 
skills in the game are explosives, mechanical, medical, marksmanship, wisdom, dexterity, agility, and health. And of course, their level, which increases how much they get paid, which is bad for you, but good for them. They don't do anything with that money, by the way. They don't buy equipment or anything. And you cannot buy equipment in Jagged Alliance 1. In other Jagged Alliance games, buying equipment is a thing, but not in this one. Thank you very much for watching Tran Plays Jagged Alliance. See you next time.